The hot summer sun is beating down, the harvest is in, and we're going to the fair. As I was riding to Brimbledon Fair, I saw pretty Nancy a curling her hair. I gave her a wink, and she rode her dog eye, and said I to myself, I'll be there by and by. Hello and welcome to Handed Down, a podcast that celebrates traditional songs and the people who sing them. I'm Jenny Shaw and each month I bring you a story about a traditional song or an interview about a song with a folk musician. And some months you get both. I'm also doing the first Handed Down live show at St Nicholas Church in the centre of Gloucester on the 4th of September at two o'clock. It's part of the Folk at the Folk Festival and it's completely free. I'm really excited about it. So do come along if you can. I can promise you songs and tunes and stories and a bit of joining in if you want to. So I would love to see you there. But for today, we're looking at a song that for me was the soundtrack to my early childhood. And it goes together in my mind with those long, hot summers of the mid 70s. It's a song of seduction and betrayal. Not very suitable for a young child, now I come to think about it. But that's folk for you, isn't it? And I always loved the beautiful tune sung by Shirley Collins. The song is called Ramble Away, but it's also known as Brimble Down Fair. Derry Down Fair, Brockles Be Fair, lots of different fairs. It's one of those songs that singers could localise if they wanted, or they could just come up with a romantic sounding name to set the scene. As well as looking at the song today, we're going to take a wander through the British fair in all its forms and hear about some of the things that could happen there, because the fair is a magical place. It's an escape from the drudgery of everyday life. Anything could happen at the fair. Ye lads and lasses, spruce and gay, to sell the fair, come haste away. The season's fine and there will be the joyous pastime there to see. Such as well please you every one, therefore make haste and come along. Fairs in the British Isles go back almost a thousand years. They could be granted by charter to provide revenue to a castle or a religious house. But in some cases, they just took place because they always had, as far as anyone could remember. They were a place for trading and entertainment and for showing off the latest innovations, whether newfangled agricultural machinery or early photography. A lot of songs about fairs, and especially broadside ballads, sound like adverts or reviews. They could be adapted for any fair in the land and they describe what went on there. There's a group of songs called The Humours of the Fair, which sound like they've been written on behalf of Big Fair. So enticing is the vision that they present. One of the earliest and largest English fairs was Bartholomew Fair in London. The charter was originally granted in 1133 by King Henry I to help fund the Priory of St Bartholomew's. And it took place traditionally on the 24th of August. It lasted longer than the Priory itself, becoming adopted by the growing city of London, where it was celebrated until 1855, when it was closed down for encouraging debauchery. In its heyday, it would last as long as two weeks, and it was famed as a cloth fair and for its many different amusements. In 1667, Samuel Pepys wrote this, And so to Bartholomew Fair. And there, being very dirty and now night, we saw a poor fellow whose legs were tied behind his back dance upon his hands with his arse above his head and also dance upon his crutches without any legs upon the ground to help him, which he did with that pain that I was sorry to see and did pity him and gave him money after he had done. Then we went to see a piece of clockwork made by an Englishman. Indeed, very good, wherein all the several states of man's age to a hundred years old is shown very pretty and solemn, and several other things more cheerful. Bartholomew Fair was such a cultural phenomenon that it provided a backdrop to a play of the same name by Ben Jonson, which Pepys described as admirable and well-acted, but too much profane and abusive, which is pretty rich coming from Pepys. 
And as you may guess, there's also a song about Bartholomew Fair, which is neither profane nor abusive, but it is good fun. I got this version from a Ewan McCall recording. Room for company, here come good fellows, room for company, Bartholomew Fair. Cobblers and broom and jailers and loom and room for company, Bartholomew Fair. Butchers and tailors, shipwrights and sailors, room for company, well may they fare. Room for company, here come good fellows, room for company, Bartholomew Fair. Paviers, bricklayers, potters and brickmakers, room for company, Bartholomew Fair. Pinders and pewterers, plumbers and fruiterers, room for company, well may they fare. Room for company, here come good fellows, room for company, at Bartholomew Fair. Some fairs took on a theme all of their own and became notorious. In the notes for his album, The Road to Horn Fair, Joshua Burnell gives us a quote from A Tour Through the Whole Island of Great Britain, 1724 to 1727, by Daniel Defoe. Charlton, a village famous, or rather infamous, for the yearly collected rabble of mad people at Horn Fair, the rudeness of which I cannot but think is such as ought to be suppressed. And indeed, in a civilised, well-governed nation, it may well be said to be insufferable. The mob, indeed, at that time, take all kinds of liberties, and the women are especially impudent for that day, as if it was a day that justified the giving themselves to a loose to all manner of indecency and immodesty without any reproach or without suffering the censure which such behaviour would deserve at another time. How shocking. It was on the morn of sweet May Day when nature painted all things gay, taught birds to sing and lambs to play and gild the meadows fair. Young Jockey early in the morn arose and tripped it o'er the lawn. His sonder coat the youth put on, for Jenny had vowed away to run with Jockey to the fair, my boys, Jockey to the fair. But one of the strangest occurrences at a fair is presented in Thomas Hardy's The Mayor of Casterbridge, and it was based on a real event. In the story, a peevish young man gets drunk on furmity, a kind of spiced wheat porridge which had been liberally laced with rum. And what happened next changed the rest of his life. The auctioneer selling the old horses in the field outside could be heard saying, Now, this is the last lot, now who will take the last lot for a song? Shall I say forty shillings? Tis a very promising broodmare, a trifle over five years old, and nothing the matter with the horse at all, except that she's a little holler in the back, and had her left eye knocked out by the kick of another, her own sister, coming along the road. For my part, I don't see why men who have got wives and don't want them shouldn't get rid of them, as these gypsy fellows do with their old horses, said the man in the tent. Why shouldn't they put them up and sell them by auction to men who are in need of such articles? Hey, why, begad, I'd sell mine this minute if anyone would buy her. I'll tell you what, I won't sell her for less than five, said the husband, bringing down his fist so that the basins danced. I'll sell her for five guineas to any man that will pay me the money and treat her well. And he shall have her forever, and never hear aught of me, but she shan't go for less. Now then, five guineas and she's yours. Susan, you agree? She bowed her head with absolute indifference. Five guineas, said the auctioneer, or she'll be withdrawn. Do anyone give it? The last time, yes or no? Yes, said a loud voice from the doorway. But perhaps most of all, going to the fair is an occasion to get dressed up in your finest clothes. It's a place to meet new people, maybe those who are travelling with the fair itself, or those who just love to wander. Many a love affair has started at the fair, 
and one such tryst was planned by a calculating young man. Yes, we're back with young Ramble away as he plans and executes his perfect seduction of lovely Nancy. Versions of this song have been collected across England and occasionally Ireland, referring to both real and imaginary affairs, but it's most commonly been found in the south of England. It's a song that was very popular as a broadside throughout the 19th century, where it was most often set in Birmingham. Now, there might be a good reason why it pops up in the early 1800s and remained popular, because it could have come alongside a social change when it came to marriage and illegitimacy. Writing in the Folk Music Journal back in the 80s, Vic Gammon suggested that controlling sex was a matter of survival in 18th century rural England, where late marriage and abstinence ensured that the population didn't grow past the size that the land could support, and a strong moral code ensured that this persisted over the generations. But then, moving towards the 19th century, the old order started to break down. In a wage-earning economy, young men could better afford to marry, and alongside this loosening of restrictions came a higher rate of illegitimate children. That being the case, the song Ramble Away both reflects the new reality and cautions against it, especially to young girls who, of course, would have to bear the consequences and perhaps end up in the workhouse, or worse. It's Nancy herself that gives the warning in many versions of the song, not in a sensational way, but in a resigned manner. Go out and have a good time, she tells us, but look out for those notorious lads who'll get you knocked up and then run away. Poor old Nancy. But did you know that there's a part two to the story? Stay tuned after the song, and I'll tell you all about it. As I was a-walking down Birmingham Street In my new scarlet jacket all neat and complete The girls all say as they pass me by Is that the young man they call Ramble Away As I was a walking Birmingham Fair I spied lovely Nancy curling her hair I gave her the wink and she rolled her dark eye and said I to myself I'll be there by and by As I was a-walking that night in the dark I took this gun, Nancy, to be my sweetheart She smiled in my face and to me she did say Aren't you the young man they call Ramble away? Well, I said, my dear Nancy, don't smile in my face For I do not intend to stay long in this place Then where are you going? Come tell me, my dear Well, I told her I'd ramble the devil knows where Before twelve weeks was over and past This pretty young Nancy she grew sick at last Her dress wouldn't pin nor her apron Strings tied, and she longed for the sight of young Rumble away. My 
dad and my mother are both gone from home but when they return I won't sit down and moan I'll just tell them the story and leave them to say well no doubt she's been playing with young Ramble away Now all you young ladies take this warning by me When you're courting the boys don't be easy and free Just dress yourselves up as you'd step out to play But take care if you meet with young Ramble away In a broadside ballad, published around the same time as the original song, there is a song called Answer to Young Ramble Away. It's kind of a fanfic on Ramble Away, Although my daughter tells me it should more accurately be described as a fix-fic because it fixes perceived plot points in the original. Just to give you an idea of what this is like, here is a quick verse. As I was a-walking one morning in May I thought of my young son called Ramble Away I travel through London cities all around. None like my Nancy is there to be found. It sounds as though it might have been written by a clergyman or some other moral guardian, but with, sadly, little discernible talent in songwriting. Nonetheless, for the purpose of closure, you might want to know that Ramble Away falls in love with Nancy and his little son. And he repents and he vows to ramble no more. And they all live happily ever after, which is nice. Thank you so much for listening to the show. You can find us on Apple, Google and anywhere else you get your podcasts from. Do subscribe so that you'll never miss an episode and give us a rating if you can. We'll be back soon with more stories and songs. Until then, you take care.